is he crosses east of the Blue Ridge South Mountain mm -hmm. and he advances to Frederick. And he knows when he goes to Frederick, he poses a threat to Washington, he poses a threat to Baltimore, and he poses a threat to Pennsylvania. And that is gonna draw the Union Army out of the defenses of Washington. That is his objective. It's just like in the Gettysburg campaign, the mistake that people make is they think his objective is to gather supplies, et cetera. His objective was the Union Army. That, that, is, that is the only, defeating that is the only way you shift the political needle. wants to draw it out of Washington into the field where he can then fight the army uh, and to an advantage. To His army is, um, I mean, they are beyond the end of their supply line. So they're really in rough shape, particularly the units that have participated in the Peninsula and the Manassas campaigns. Those units are in terrible condition. Straggling in the army is rampant. I mean, they, the army in Maryland had about 27,000 stragglers. Wow. A significant portion of the army straggled and they didn't straggle because they didn't believe in what they were fighting for and they didn't want to, you know, fight for the Confederacy any longer. I think they, they straggled because they were physically ill, they were completely worn out, and they were really hungry. He's just going to leak stragglers everywhere he goes in Maryland and every part of this operation. And his operation that he puts together is really demanding. Yeah. There's a lot of hard marching that these troops have to do in the course of this campaign. And that's what places some of his objectives at risk. Because when he gets to Frederick, he assesses the situation, the Union Army starts to come out from Washington, which is what he wants. But then he learns that the Union garrisons at Harpers Ferry and Martinsburg are still there. And he, uh, rather than seeing that as a problem, he sees it as an opportunity, which is typical of Lee. Mm -hmm. And he conceives a very complicated plan to capture or destroy those garrisons, which ends up dividing his army into five pieces. And that's what leaves him vulnerable when McClellan advances across the state, then finds Lee's special orders, called Special Orders 191, which are the orders for all the divisions that participated in the Harpers Ferry operation, all the divisions of the Army, and what they were supposed to do. And that enabled McClellan to um, mount an offensive against Lee that nearly ends the campaign.
So on the night of September the 14th, Lee's army has fought the Battle of South Mountain and they've essentially been defeated right. because the Federals have broken through at Crampton's Gap and up at Turner and Fox's Gap, they've seized the key terrain there. Right. And Lee makes a decision he's going to retreat to Virginia. And then as they start to fall back on the march towards Boonesboro and Sharpsburg and then across the Potomac, Lee revises the idea because he realizes that Lafayette McClaws, who is at Maryland Heights, and in Pleasant Valley is trapped. He wants to help McClaws get away. So he first decides he's going to halt near Boonesboro, and then he changes his mind. It was going to halt behind a creek near Boonesboro. Then he changes his mind, and he uh, decides he is going to um, – actually, it was Keatesville is where he was going to halt. And then he's going to – he decides that he'll move behind Antietam Creek at Sharpsburg, and he'll, he'll uh, set up a temporary position. He didn't intend to fight a battle. It was a temporary position. What changes everything for Lee is on the morning of the 15th of September, he receives word from Stonewall Jackson that Harper's Ferry is going to be surrendered. And when he gets that, Lee is always an opportunist. Lee sees maybe it's going to take McClellan a while to get over the mountain and assemble his army and move up against me. Maybe I can reunite my army. And uh, so that raises the big question that people are always going to ask. And I'm not, you know, I try to answer it, but I think people will continue to ask it. Why does Lee decide to fight a battle at Sharpsburg? <clears throat> Why does he take this enormous risk to assemble his army there with all this hard marching and offer a battle in Maryland? And the uh, interpretation that I came up with is that, again, Lee is an opportunist. The moment... He withdraws across the Potomac River into Virginia. He surrenders the initiative to the Union Army. He never likes to surrender the initiative. And if he stays in Maryland and offers battle and defeats McClellan's attack against him, what might McClellan do? Well, you don't know what he's going to do. But what has he done in the past? Well, he might fall back to a strong defensive position, like South Mountain. If he does that, Lee remains in Maryland. The way to Pennsylvania and Hagerstown in Pennsylvania is open. And the the campaign north of the Potomac River can continue. That strategically is a win for the Confederacy. And I think Lee takes a tremendous risk here because he sees the potential for a large strategic gain for the Confederacy.